Thanks, uh, thanks, Karine. It's good to be with you. Uh, as Karine noted, we're marking the one-year anniversary of a truly transformative piece of legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is the largest investment in clean energy and climate action ever in the United States in the history of the world. But first, I want to acknowledge that today's event is coming during a time of heartbreak as the toll of extreme weather fueled by climate change is being felt across the country and the world. This summer has brought one climate disaster after another from extreme heat in Arizona and Texas and across the southeast to floods in Vermont and upstate New York to thick smoke from Canadian wildfires. And all of us have watched in horror as the Maui fires have claimed over 100 lives, uh, the largest loss of life of a fire in the last 100 years in America. As FEMA Administrator Criswell just explained, the administration is doing everything we can to support Hawaii's rescue and recovery efforts. To stop these disasters from getting even worse, we have to cut the carbon pollution that's driving the climate crisis, and that's what the Inflation Reduction Act is all about. It makes the largest investment in clean energy and climate action in the world, touching every sector, power, transportation, buildings, industry, agriculture, and forestry. It's reducing energy costs for hardworking Americans by offering $7,500 off qualifying electric vehicles and up to 30% off heat pumps and solar panels, which can lower monthly utility bills for families by hundreds of dollars a year. Already, utility companies have announced they'll be able to pass on to their customers at least $8 billion of savings thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. And a new report released this morning by the Department of Energy shows that those savings will grow to up to $38 billion between now and the end of the decade. And this law is putting us on a path to reach the Biden-Harris administration's goal of reducing emissions by 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. The Inflation Reduction Act is tackling the climate crisis with a government-enabled, private sector-led approach. In the one year since the Inflation Reduction Act passed, we've already seen more than $110 billion in new clean energy manufacturing investments from the private sector. Add to that $122 billion in investments in new utility-scale clean electricity, wind, solar, battery, storage, and more. These new investments are creating jobs and bringing economic opportunity to communities all across America. One year in, this historic law is advancing Bidenomics by investing in America, lowering energy costs, advancing environmental justice, and rebuilding our economy from the middle out and the bottom up. The law contains other provisions regarding health care and tax policy, so now it's my pleasure to pass it on to my colleague and friend, Domestic Policy Advisor Neera Tandon. Thanks, John. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks for those kind words. And I'd just like to say um, it's a great honor to be here with you. Um, from day one, President Biden and the Biden-Harris administration have been focused on lowering health care costs for all Americans because we know health care costs can be a huge economic stress for families. That's why the Inflation Reduction Act lowers these costs, these, these care costs for millions of Americans. It's already doing so. 15 million people are continuing to save $800 a year on their health insurance premiums. Seniors are already seeing life-saving benefits of this law. $35, out of, $35 out of pocket cap on insulin, free recommended vaccines like shingles and tetanus, lower out of pocket coinsurance for certain drugs that raise prices faster than inflation. And critically, for the first time ever, we're able to negotiate prices for prescription drugs covered under Medicare. In a couple of weeks, HHS will announce which 10 drugs are part of the first round of negotiations. The Inflation Reduction Act also caps out-of-pocket spending on prescription drugs to $2,000 a year for Medicare beneficiaries. Nearly 19 million seniors will save an estimated $400 on average annually just from this cap. That's why these benefits are really crucial. Benefits just like I laid out will save an average of $2,500 per year for people who have specifically high costs. 
I've met Americans who've rationed prescription drugs. Drug, I, they've rationed pills. They've taken two when they've needed four, one when they've needed two. Sometimes they've not taken the drugs they've needed at all. That's because prescription drug prices in the United States have been two to three times higher than any other country. For decades, we've been talking about lowering drug costs and giving Medicare the power to negotiate lower drug prices. Only President Biden has gotten it done, and it will make a real difference for millions of Americans.